Alright, well, just when you thought it was safe to breathe a sigh of relief on Season 3, uh, yeah, another Spike episode, and gotta worry right from the start when one of those shows up, but, uh, yeah, this one is just for sidekicks, and, uh, starts out, Spike is baking a jewel cake, which is what our episode hinges on, believe it or not, just a cake with his gems that he's saved up cooked into the, cooked into it, because... I guess, yeah, dragons like to eat gems, so they really like to eat gem cakes, I guess, but, um, anyway, then. Uh, so, yeah. Aloysius then shows up so they can do the old routine where, uh, follow me on this one. I'll say, who? So Spike thinks he's asking, who? Yeah, get it? Eh? Just like the last time they did it. Uh, okay, I ran into the cynicism there, but, okay, anyway, Aloysius tries to warn Spike that he's eating all the gems he saved up before he... Even has time to put him in the cake, Spike doesn't even notice, and when he finds they're all gone, he starts asking the owl back, Who? Who stole my gems? And once Aloysius manages to point out that it was Spike, Spike starts screaming, Why? at the top of his lungs, and then he finds one last gem, tries to put it in, accidentally eats it too, as like a subconscious reaction, and then starts screaming, Why? again, at which point Aloysius turns to the camera and requests that the scene end already, so... Okay, I was with him on that one, but, um, alright, no, but the actual conflict is, uh, after the cake thing, Fluttershy drops by, uh, telling Spike that all of the friends, well, uh, he already knows this, but, for summary's sake, all of the friends, the ponies, they're going to the Crystal Empire to help with, uh, whatever it was, some kind of presentation, um, so, yeah, Spike, uh, he... Well, she wants Spike to babysit Angel Bunny in exchange for a gem, and uh, Angel is Angel, he's obnoxious, he doesn't want to stay with Spike, and Spike really doesn't want to look after him, but um, when he uh, hears that she's offering a gem and as payment, he agrees, and then he starts thinking he could maybe uh, get this, expand this and do enough gems to make his cake out of if he asks all the other ponies if they want uh, the him to pet sit, and, okay, but long story short, he manages to convince them all, including Twilight, even though, yeah, I don't know why she would need to charge him for that, since he's her assistant anyway, but, um, yeah, I don't know why she'd have to pay, but, um, anyway, though, uh, of course, Spike did not intend to be responsible, he just intended to get the gem so he could bake his cake, and, uh, so, yeah, he... When Havoc breaks loose the minute all the ponies leave, he uh, has trouble. He, it's more than he expected, and then the Angel Bunny escapes, leads them all over Ponyville, and uh, yeah, first to the Cutie Mark Crusaders, who he tries to, in his crafty Spike way, um, convince to watch Angel, because maybe they'll get a pet-sitting Cutie Mark, and then all the pets on top of that, so he can just bake his cake, not have to watch anyone. And he pet, but, um, so yeah, but they charge him a gem, telling him they're gonna need to buy the pets food and toys and stuff, so, okay, uh, then after they blow it, he, uh, takes the pets back, uh, tries to watch them again, they tie him up, and, uh, I can remember what happened. Sakura comes by telling him she can fix his problems, that, yeah, out with the bad mojo surrounding him in exchange for a gem, and then she, Takes it, uh, tells him that nothing is worse mojo than dragon greed, and drops the gem into a charity box, which, yeah, still thinking over that one. Zakora is prejudiced against dragons, but, um, that's kind of an oxymoron almost, but anyway, though, and you can probably see where this is going. He, uh, chases the pets all over town, he, um, loses one gem at a time through some mishap or another until it ends with him uh, having to take the Cutie Mark Crusaders on the train to the Crystal Empire with all the pets, because you know, they won't let the pets on without ponies to watch them, but pet sitters, so he has to get them on the train so we can find Angel, who has jumped on to stow away to the Crystal Empire, and uh, yeah, but when he manages to catch Angel, they've um, already reached the Crystal Empire, he's Lost all of his gems, but he doesn't even care. And, uh, so yeah, the pony gang, though, he finds that it turns out they're boarding the tr same train back home. And, um, Angel has the chance to give them away once they 
pick the very compartment that Spike, the Crusaders, and the pets are in. They're hiding. They have to hide under the seats. And uh, Angel's about to kick the seats, warn, tell, alert the ponies that they're there. When Spike uh, he overhears Twilight saying something that she's sure that Spike is responsible enough to handle this. Yeah, he's saying calm and collected. He's got to be doing a great job as a leader. So, okay, he then uh, feels shame for trying to be uh, just a user the whole time. Uh, you know, not really taking care of the pets, just yeah, using them as a means to an end. So he apologizes. He tells Angel to do his worst. And uh, that actually appeals to the bunny, who instead, when Spike's stomach starts growling, uh, goes and retrieves the last gem that he technically didn't have to give up. He just had to use as a projectile weapon to block Angel's path. But yeah, he retrieves it, he feeds it to Spike, so his stomach will stop growling, and they manage to get back without uh, alerting the ponies, and Spike learns his lesson, and everyone who knew what happened considers him... Vaguely the hero of the hour, I guess, but, um, okay, but he still accidentally eats the last gem, so we get to go out with him screaming why again. So, yeah, he is really not, uh, becoming at least a pattern, maybe more, almost surprising how much this show is starting to resemble the mediocre cartoons I used to spend whole afternoons watching when I was eight. That's, that's surprising. And it's even more surprising that that's what it took to finally get Spike a decent episode. I mean, yeah, I'm serious. This is the first episode that didn't make me think they were singling him out for anything in particular. Didn't seem like, yeah, they were trying to focus on, okay, he's a dragon, so he's, uh, yeah, technically not part of the gang. And, well, we kind of want to keep that going. We don't want him to just, yeah, single him out and kind of make it seem like an awkward sort of a blend that just, like, giving off the implication that, yeah, he's, uh, almost their pet as much as he's their, uh, friend. But, okay, no, this episode, uh, just gives it, like, gives him a conflict based on one of his character flaws at getting big eyes for something he wants and letting it affect his better judgment, uh, a little bit greedy, and then having to rise to the challenge and go through this misadventure and step up to the plate at the end. That's a conflict. That, that, well, that, that happens to people, I guess, that kind of thing. That's, uh, yeah, he's legitimately the protagonist of this one, and not, like, in the, in a condescending sort of way. And, uh, so yeah, this is the first episode to do that with him, and I, well, not only was I glad to see it, I thought, while the episode is nothing special, I think it does work as a decent enough sort of an episode. It, um, yeah, I mean, the plot is predictable. You can say he's going to lose the gems one at a time through mishaps, and he's going to uh, get perpetually more annoyed and whatnot. But, um, well, for one, just having him uh, as the protagonist just sort of interacting with everyone, especially the cutie mark crusaders, that's they're sort of the one. If they're the closest he comes to being teamed up with anyone. And that, like I said in the episode with Applejack, kind of has some appeal. Just see, again, he seems like, part of the group, and we get to see his personality now playing off of everyone, because, I mean, you know, like I said before, it was a condescending sort of thing, and just, like, his, they more focused on how he's either Twilight's assistant or how he has a crush on Rarity. It's not just, okay, what is Spike about, and, okay, we need to focus on that this time, so that's good, but, I mean, more importantly, um, this episode, while it, while the plot is standard stuff and doesn't really throw any curves into it, uh, you do still see the extra mile of creativity that um, I've come to appreciate from this show in passing a few times, like, uh, what is it, the, yeah, the Crusaders, when Spike comes back and says, alright, give me back the gem, you do the pet sitting, they reveal that they spent it on a gigantic hair dryer for the pets, and it's it doesn't look a thing like a hair dryer, it's like some kind of strange factory machine, uh, that's not even the best example, too, that was kind of an odd one, but I mean, just stuff like that, they're actually trying, which is pretty good, but also, though, we get to see the pets back, and, um, I guess, uh, everyone had kind of a fun role there to, uh, various extents, I, the one who, well, besides Angel, of course, I mean, who else would be the villain, he was, uh, you know, we know he's stubborn, he's kind of 
self-centered. He's a schmuck, and he, yeah, he makes sense as the villain. But other than him, uh, the one who probably has the most identity is Aloysius. It's like they give pretty good visual cues that, yeah, he's the smartest one in the room most of the time, at least with the pets and uh, maybe even Spike. Yeah, he's the smartest one in the room, and he more or less knows it, even though he's benign about it. And yeah, here's another uh, extra mile thing. They have this gag where Tank the Flying Turtle is coming to uh, land on his perch beside him. The owl steps knowingly out of the way. Like, there's chaos raging around him with the pets. He knows he can't do a thing about it, but Tank's coming. Like, he knows he can cope with that. He just has to step out of the way, but he doesn't count on the t turtle being incredibly heavy. He lands on the perch, bends it to the floor, and slingshots the owl away. So, yeah, just a little gag like that. And there's stuff like that throughout the episode, and it's fun. And, uh, so... But yeah, he, Aloysius is the smartest one in the room and basically knows it, even if his crew gag gets old really fast. And, uh, okay, Tank, it was nice to see him back, uh, cause he has not been mentioned at all, I don't think, since he, uh, debuted in, uh, the episode with Rainbow Dash. And I mean, that was probably some of the best episodes, or the best moments, excuse me, in this episode between the two of them, uh, either between Rainbow Dash and Tank or between Pinkie Pie and Gummy, but, yeah, just like uh, Rainbow Dash is going on about how Tank doesn't need anyone to pet sit him, he's totally independent, and then he keeps crashing into everything and kind of embarrassing her. And I mean, that was um, that was just the setup because though, because I mean, uh, yeah, it's like Tank is showing all this affection to her, and she like looking her on the face. She's a little bit embarrassed while I mean, trying to like wanting him to come across as this very capable, great pet, but then. Yeah, when they're saying their goodbyes in the library uh, before everyone takes off for the train. Um, yeah, everyone has their own unique way of saying goodbye. Rainbow Dash uh, looks around to make sure nobody else is looking and then uh, gives Tank a nose rub that you know, she knows he's waiting for. And just like, and I mean, and not reluctantly either. Like, she has this big smile on her face. Like, so, so yeah, she's too embarrassed to let anyone see that she loves her tortoise. But uh, yeah, very cute and very Rainbow Dash. But also, though, Pinkie Pie uh, brings a very is a very strong contender there, because in true Pinkie Pie fashion, she's hilarious. She still thinks she can understand Gummy, who seems completely like a blank slate. Uh, but yeah, Spike picks the wrong way to try to make use of that. He um, talks to Gummy and uh, acts like Gummy has something to say, and then leaves it to Pinkie Pie to interpret. And of course, she's like, oh, well, of course you can have another cupcake, Gummy. Oh, no, Pinkie Pie. I think, oh, he wants a bigger pond. Done. And just, yeah, she keeps going with all these random things until he finally pinches her mouth shut and says he wants some spike time. And, um, yeah, Pinkie Pie, such a sweetheart. So, yeah, yeah more power to her for that, but she's easy to dial. Uh, uh, yeah, he just says, um, the minute he says that, she's like, well, who wouldn't want spike time is the greatest. Alas, it doesn't come cheap. But, um, Okay, so yeah, just great Pinkie Pie moment there. Um, but yeah, that was, uh, I guess, oh, and Fluttershy asking Spike to babysit Angel was I mean, kind of cute in her own way. Like, she's too timid to ask even Spike, even though he's just the sort of little brother of the group. And I mean, you know, really modest with him and, um, and then very grateful when he accepts too. So yeah, Fluttershy was Fluttershy in this episode, and that's, Cute enough. I mean, sometimes Fluttershy can be, I guess, a little artificial in her cuteness. But I mean, it was it was fine here. It was, it was cute. So, <laughs> all right. But um, yeah, I guess the rest of the pets they haven't shown up in forever. Oh, uh, one more thing though. Like we get to see pet uh, Spike uh, ask convince all the ponies to let him pet sit except Applejack. She just shows up uh, claiming they already had the conversation because yeah, that we'd seen. What um, Applejack, as her relationship with Winona is, or whatever, it would have cut into Spike's screams of why, I'm sure, or, you know, the routine you know, with Aloysius, and we couldn't have that. But, um, now Winona, she always was kind of the least spotlighted of the pets. She's just a dog. But although, um, yeah, I guess in this case, while she was sort of a plot device before, they do, uh, do a nice job of, I guess, turning her into that lovable dog that everyone would want. But, um, yeah, she's really frisky, active. She's the one Spike has to use to hunt down angels when he makes a break for it. So, I mean, 
and yeah, no matter what happens, she's always really enthusiastic. So, um, okay, I guess, I mean, the couple, uh, very brief, nice moments with her in Applejack. So, okay, but she's fine, I guess. As for you, Scummy, um, he is kind of a, well, he's sort of there so Pinkie Pie can do her shtick, but playing off of him, but, um, okay, so, I mean, that's, Run for it is. Uh, there's Opal the Mean Cat, which is kind of self-explanatory. Or there was this moment between her and Tank where it's like they're warming up to each other now, so that was kind of cute. But I mean, Tank's uh, sort of affectionate, steadfast personality. That's hard to emphasize in passing, so he's more of a gag character. I mean, a flying tortoise with a propeller. That's There's no limit to the guys you can think of with that, and they keep him coming, but yeah, he's... Uh, they couple of notes to what he's like, but, um, yeah, that was just in passing, uh, let me see, have I left anyone out there? I'm assuming not, but, um, alright, but, uh, so let me see, oh, and then Spike himself is, uh, just pretty funny, too, like, uh, there's this bit where he comes across Granny Smith, uh, and he's wheeling the pets, he's tied them all together because they were hurting each other, there's just no other way to transport them, he's wheeling them back to the house, Granny Smith spots them. And he asks Sir for a way to make it all just go away. So, and he, um, gives Sir a gem, finally relenting, knowing that, because even he knows where this is going by now. But, um, so yeah, the pets all break loose, knock him over, and uh, just as he said, yeah, no bunny has to know about this. She has lost nothing now, because he's not even doing it anymore. She's just like, hear about what now? And, yeah, walks away all smug. So, and, and he uh, turns red in the ground, like, like he's, uh, he's a dragon who can breathe fire, but yeah, like he's actually heating up and, well, visual gag, you get it. He, he flares up and, and well, with his face still in the ground, so you just have to imagine what his, what the expression he's making, but yeah, you can tell he's mad at all, heck. But, um, okay, so, going on, I mean, like, it's kind of an easygoing episode, there's, yeah, really not much to it except the moments and Spike's uh, progression, and you know, you do believe that, yeah, one, he, I mean, he's been kind of selfish before, but here he legitimately steps up to the plate, and it's not, that's not good for Spike or anything like that, it's just, you know, wide character, uh, has their arc, comes full circle, learns a lesson, and, uh, manages to more or less be the hero, so, I appreciated that, I thought it was, uh, just fine, uh, perfectly entertaining, without bogging us down in anything, I did sort of like watching Spike play off the cutie mark crusaders, who, um, are all, they're on the train, they want to see the Crystal Empire and stuff, they're always uh, whining for something, well they're not I always know, that's not really fair, but um, no, they're, uh, yeah, just like innocently demanding and they, I mean, they're in their crusader world, but he, he has to work with them on that one, but um, yeah, that's the thing, even though he's supposed to be a baby dragon, quote unquote, he does it plays like he's a little older than they are, so I don't know, um, they're take on that is, but, um, yeah. and on some other parts, though, they do sort of operate on the same level, like, the debating whether they're gonna go out and see the Crystal Empire, so instead of, uh, telling them they have to sit down because he's the one in charge, he just tries to block the door, and then they tickle him with one of Scootaloo's feathers, complete with the, don't make me use this, but, okay, an attempt to get past him, but, um, all right, so, it's a disjointed kind of a summary, but that's all there really is to, like, who had, other than Spike's progression, just who had what gags and how well they work, and I mean, like I said, it's nice to see the pets back, and they all work moderately well, so I mean, I think that this is a decent episode, you know, it meets the standard, and that's kind of the first time for Spike, except for, I haven't forgotten about this one, a dog and pony show, so, yeah, that was a decent episode, probably better than this one, Spike was the co-star there, he had an equal role to rarity, so, okay, other than that, but yeah, as the solo outing, uh, this is Spike's best, so yeah, season three, and half the, with half the episodes, it managed to fit in two that were my two least favorites so far, it's making mistakes that this show did not make before, that, as you worried about it, and it's also the season on my card to give Pinkie Pie, Scootaloo, Fluttershy, and Spike pretty much their best episodes yet, and that's, I think, how many are in the gang? That, that's four out of the six, plus the Crusaders, plus Spike. I think that's more than its share, especially since it only had 13 episodes, so I really don't know. But, um, 
Okay, well, we'll see. The next episode is Games Ponies Play, so, yeah, like I said, I'm not going to give the final opinion, I guess, until it really is my final opinion, because, yeah, all over the board. So, alright, come back for that one.